Could installing a dedicated 20 amp circuit actually improve the sound quality in your home theater? Well, I'm gonna answer that question right after the intro. Now, the first thing we need to do before I can say whether or not I hear any difference in my system is to get the new circuit installed. And of course, I have to mention that this video is for educational purposes only. I'm not encouraging anyone to try to do this on their own. In fact, I recommend hiring a licensed electrician to make sure the job is done right. All right, with that out of the way, let's get started with the materials. You're gonna need some wire nuts, a cable clamp to secure the wire to the panel, a 20 amp breaker, make sure you buy the same brand as the ones in your breaker panel, a 20 amp receptacle, I bought two because I'm installing two. This is gonna depend on your install. You may only be doing one, that's fine. 12-2 Romex wire, rated for 20 amp circuits. An old work electrical box, or sometimes they're called a remodel box, but they're the same thing. For tools, I used a Phillips and flathead screwdriver, a Sharpie or a pencil, a stud finder, an outlet tester, a volt tester. These are nice to have just to make sure the power is off in the circuit that you're working on. Razor knife, wire strippers, and a few things to repair the sheetrock once we're done with the install. Now for the part that I've been dreading getting all those heavy amps out of that corner so I can start working. Next, I made a template to use on the wall for the cutout. Just trace the outline except for the tabs and cut it out. I'll be moving this power conditioner up the wall a bit for better access. Here I'm using the stud finder to verify there's nothing behind the spot I've chosen for the outlet. I measured up from the baseboard the same amount as the existing outlet so they'd all be the same height. And here I used the template to trace an outline for the box. And it's always a good idea to double check your measurements before you cut. I scored the paper with a razor knife and then cut the rest of the hole with a sheetrock saw. And once you're done, check to see if the box fits. Hopefully it'll drop right in with a snug fit. In preparation for wiring the outlets, I made two sets of pigtails about eight inches long. Then I ran the rest of the wire through the hole in the wall, leaving about a foot hanging out so I could place it in the box. Now you just tighten the two tabs and the box is installed. Strip the sheathing of the wire to about one inch from where it enters the box. Now cut the wires leaving about eight inches hanging out of the box and strip the ends. Take the two white pigtails we made earlier and connect them to the white neutral wire with a wire nut.
I like to add electrical tape just to make sure the wires are secured together. Now follow the same steps with the black hot wire. I usually try to give the wires a tug just to make sure they're in there nice and tight. Now we're going to take one of the white pigtails and connect it to the side of the receptacle with the silver screws. Now here I had to move the receptacle out of the way because I had actually forgot to get the pigtails for the ground ready. And this is done exactly the same as the neutral and hot pigtails we did. And once that's done, just connect the ground wire to the green screw on the receptacle. Now you just connect the black wire to the brass screw on the other side. And if you're installing more than one receptacle, just repeat the same process. Now all that's left is to push the wires in the box, screw in the receptacles, and put the wall plate on. Alright, so that's done. Now it's time to move out to the garage and get to work on the electrical panel. The cover's held on with six screws. I then measured, marked, and cut out an access hole above the panel. This is where the wire from the theater is going to come down. And now it's time to go up into the attic. This is just a small area above my garage, so it's kind of tight. Here's the wire we ran from the home theater. And here I'm feeding the wire through an existing hole to my son as he pulls it down. All right, it's time to start wiring the breaker. As you can see, I placed cardboard at the bottom so there'd be no way to slip and touch the wires below the main shutoff. These will always be hot. I turned off the main breaker to the house and used a voltage tester to make sure it was actually off. Down there it's not. Then I knocked out a tab and placed a cable clamp on top of the panel in order to run the wire. I also secured the wire to the wood brace above. Next, I stripped the wire and cut the sheathing one inch from the top of the box. Then I molded the wire so it followed the same path as the original wiring. I measured and cut both the ground and neutral wires, then I fastened them to the bus bar.
Next, I ran the black wire to the breaker location, then cut, stripped, and installed the breaker into the panel. And that pretty much completes the install. All that's left is to break off this tab, install the cover, and to turn on the main breaker. And there's just one more thing. I have to check the outlet to make sure it works. I'm going to be using this little outlet tester. Two yellow lights means everything's good to go. A red light means something's wrong. And it looks like everything tests out fine, so everything is wired up correctly. Well, that's it. I now have a dedicated 20 amp circuit in my home theater. And hopefully I'll never have to worry about trip breakers again. Now to answer the big question. Does a dedicated 20 amp circuit actually make a difference when it comes to sound quality? Well, in my case it actually did, and here's how I know. One night, my family and I were watching a movie, and because the theater was kind of warm, we had our little portable AC going. We do that so we don't have to run our central AC. So anyway, as we were watching the movie, I noticed it sounded really bad. In fact, I said to my son, man, is this soundtrack just horrible or what? Well, right after I said that, there was a real loud scene in the movie, and the next thing I know, we're sitting in the dark. You know, the breaker tripped, obviously. So I went down, turned it back on. This time we continued watching the movie without the little portable AC. And the movie sounded really good. So it sounded just the way it always had. So, long story short, I know it will make a difference if you're to that limit. If you're, if you're hitting the limit of 15 amps, then your sound is definitely going to degrade. So in my honest opinion, having a dedicated 20 amp service is the only way to go if you have multiple amplifiers and you have just a lot going on in your home theater. All right, so that's the end of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. Thanks for watching and I hope you have an awesome day.